vegetarianism and the levels of meat eating, and he had different levels of balance. And the amount of raw food or cooked food would vary from diet to diet. So it was very sophisticated, all done through his computer analysis. And he was very intrigued. First, he made a serendipitous discovery, discovery in his clinic that different people seemed to do well with different diets, that there wasn't one size fits all, one diet for all humans. There were two variables of species. We come out of two many different ecological niches, and we adjusted, our ancestors adjusted to a variety of diets that one diet would suit everybody. So he made that as an observation. He didn't initially know why, but he began to look into the physiology and biochemistry of why different people would do well with different diets. And that's where he came upon the autonomic nervous system, which you mentioned in terms of the sympathetic, parasympathetic. To sum up a very esoteric area of neurophysiology, very simply, the autonomic nervous system is named as a play on the word automatic. It was named by Langley at the turn of the last century. He was a very great physiology researcher at the University of Cambridge in England. And autonomic is a play on the word automatic. This is a nervous system that controls all physiological processes that don't really require conscious input, like respiration, cardiovascular function, heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, peristalsis, the secretion of enzymes from the pancreas, the secretion of insulin, the endocrine system, the thyroid, the adrenal glands. These systems and organs and tissues, they work without conscious input, and they're able to do that because of the autonomic nervous system. I mean, we don't have to sit from second to second saying, oops, I better have my heart beat because i got to get blood going to my brain. Then the next second, I better have my heart beat. You don't have to sit there consciously determining or controlling respiration, cardiovascular function, digestion, endocrine function. It happens automatically, autonomically, as Langley said, just played on that word. This is the system beyond conscious control to simplify it, and it's divided into two branches, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And they have opposing functions, and they work, they work synergistically. They work together to try and maintain a kind of physiological equilibrium in every second of our lives. And the autonomic nervous system is active 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every single second of our lives. And there's this constant balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic function. Now, they have opposing effects. For example, when the sympathetic system fires, respiration tends to be very efficient. Heart rate goes up. Blood pressure goes up. Blood is shunted from the skin and the gut into the muscles and the brain. Um, when the sympathetic system fires, endocrine function increases, thyroid function, adrenal function, and you have an overall what's called a catabolic effect where the body starts breaking down tissues and organ, uh, tissues and organ fat and organ protein to provide energy. In a time of stress, the sympathetic system is activated, and it breaks down tissues to provide energy in a time of stress so the brain can think fast and our muscles can react fast if we need to. So it's the perfect system for stress. Now, stress can be minor like... Uh, giving a lecture or taking a final exam or presenting to your boss um, or driving in a crowded highway. It could be major, you know, like running away from a fire. But in each kind of stress that we face, the sympathetic system turns on, you know, hopefully appropriately so it doesn't overfire or underfire. So you, you have, so you're able to react appropriately to the environmental challenge. Now, the parasympathetic system is the opposite of the sympathetic system. The sympathetic system breaks down tissues to provide energy in a time of stress. The parasympathetic system builds up tissues. It's active at night. It tends to suppress respiration. It suppresses heart rate and lowers blood pressure but increases the efficiency of digestion, the release of, the release of enzymes and uh, hydrochloric acid, it increases peristalsis, increases the breakdown, absorption, assimilation of nutrients, and increases the metabolic repair and regeneration of every cell in our body. So during the day when we're active, the sympathetic system turns on, breaks down tissues at night, the parasympathetic turns on, and enhances digestion, assimilation, assimilation of nutrients, the building up of tissues and organs rather than the breakdown, the anabolism, you know, anabolic effect as it's called. The parasympathetic system also tends to tone down endocrine function, which is important in a time of repair because the thyroid and the adrenals tend to break down tissue to provide energy when the parasympathetic virus turns down the endocrine system so you can build up your tissues. And they work together. Now, Kelly realized certain people have a very strong sympathetic system and a weak parasympathetic system, and all the tissues and organs stimulated by the sympathetic system, like the respiratory system, the heart, or the endocrine system, tend to be very active and efficient. And all those tissues normally stimulated by the weak, their weak parasympathetic, like the entire digestive system, including the liver and the pancreas, tended to be very weak and inefficient. Other people had a strong parasympathetic system and a weak sympathetic system, and these people had a very strong digestive system, but weak lungs, weak cardiovascular function, weak endocrine function. And then there were balanced people where these sympathetic and parasympathetic tend to be equally developed, equally efficient, and they tend to be the healthiest people. Now, Kelly realized that sympathetic dominance tend to do really well on a vegetarian diet 
parasympathetics tended to do well on a meat diet, and the balanced people somewhere in between uh, where they did well with plant foods and animal foods. And Kelly was the great expert on the effect of diet and supplements on autonomic function. And he realized that every dietary component, every nutrient, whatever else it may to do in terms of known biochemical reactions, had an effect on the autonomic nervous system. For example, a plant diet tends to suppress the sympathetic system and build up the parasympathetic system. And that tends, in a sympathetic dominant, brings their out-of-balance autonomic system into balance, and then they function better. A meat diet tends to stimulate the sympathetic system. So in a parasympathetic dominant with a weak sympathetic system, a meat diet will stimulate the weak sympathetic system, tone down the strong parasympathetic system, bring their autonomic branches into balance, and they do better, whatever their disease, be it toenail fungus or brain cancer. With balanced people who eat uh, foods that both stimulate the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system, you're giving them foods that will keep both branches equally efficient. And Kelly really, in elegant neurophysiological detail, broke down the effect of every single vitamin and mineral and the, the micronutrients, the trace minerals, as well as the macronutrients like protein, fats, and carbohydrates and in terms of their effect on autonomic function. For example, he found that saturated fat stimulated the sympathetic system, but alpha-linolenic alpha acid and linoleic acid, the omega-6 and omega-3 essential fatty acids, tended to stimulate the parasympathetic system. Uh, EPA and DHA, the omega-3 fatty acids from fish, had an opposite effect than the plant-based essential fatty acid. They tended to stimulate the sympathetic system. He found certain B vitamins like thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, pyridoxin, folic acid toned down the sympathetic system, stimulated the parasympathetic system. Other B vitamins like B12, pantothenic acid, choline, inositol, PABA tended to stimulate the sympathetic system. Um, vitamin D stimulates the parasympathetic system. E stimulates the sympathetic system. Calcium stimulates the sympathetic system. Magnesium, potassium stimulate the parasympathetic system. Mang manganese, chromium stimulate the parasympathetic. Zinc, selenium, the sympathetic. So he actually, I'm going through this quickly, of course, but in over a period of years, I mean, he was smarter than the rest of us. This would have taken a team of hundreds of scientists working 100 years to figure this out, what Kelly figured out in about 10 years just working by himself, <clears throat> because he was blessed with an intelligence beyond what's uh, normally considered uh, brilliant. He was beyond that. Dr. He Gonzalez, was, can you answer one thing, and I want to let you finish. Yeah. But how the heck did he figure out how to test us for what was dominant in our bodies? Well, he actually had this very extensive questionnaire that was done on a, he, he actually developed a very extensive computer program working with IBM consultants this is back in the 70s that was extraordinarily sophisticated the questionnaire had 3200 questions and they range from whether you had thick thick or, uh, or thin saliva to how many hours of sleep did you need whether you whether you did better in the morning like sympathetic dominance tend to do well in the morning parasympathetics do terribly in the morning do better in the evening um, whether you crave fat, whether you crave fruit. And it just had 3,200 questions. And based on this from his own clinical experience dealing with thousands of patients, he was able to computerize this so people would fill out the questionnaire and he would get exactly where they stood in terms of their sympathetic parasympathetic systems, uh, how efficient it was, how much raw food they needed, how much cooked food, how much vegetables, how many fruits, how much bread meat. And it was just to that level of detail. And it was all done through this questionnaire. It was initially based on its observations in the clinic. He found that the different metabolic types had different personalities, different physiologies, different biochemistries, and tended to get different diseases. Like sympathetic dominance never sleep well because their system, their stress system is always turned on. They get, these are the people that get by in four or five hours of sleep and always complain about it, but feel great. And in the, you know, 7 a.m., they're in the office running the world. Parasympathetics need eight to 10 hours of sleep, even more, don't feel well in the morning, and gradually through the day wake up. And they can be very creative, do their best work at night. So they're not really suited for school where you've got to be alert in the morning. They never are. They don't do well in school, but they can be extremely creative like Thomas Edison, who did his best work at night. So he realized they had different personalities, different physiologies. Um, you know, sympathetics tended to have a rapid pulse, parasympathetics a slow pulse. So based on these um, precise differentiations, he was able to develop this computer questionnaire and very precisely and accurately determine the level of me um, metabolic typing, the level of autonomic balance. Now, there was a third category, right, called balanced. Well, the third, the balanced people were somewhere in between, which I mentioned. Their sympathetic and parasympathetics were equally developed, equally efficient. Um, and he would give both plant and animal foods and all the nutrients that would support each brand so they would stay in metabolic efficiency. They already start out balanced. Sometimes balanced people, through wrong diet, if they don't eat, you know, if they eat junk food rather than wholesome organic food, for example, can be depleted in nutrients, and both branches will tend to collapse. So they're still balanced, but both branches are just not efficient. So Kelly would give them nutrients in a dietary program that would stimulate and, and support both branches of the autonomic system. 
So, yeah, the three types. The balanced people didn't tend to get cancer, which was one of Kelly's main interests. They, they, cancers tend to occur at the extremes of autonomic.